Hi, grandkids. Do you know what the word grand means? It means great, wonderful, super. So if you're grandkids, that means you're great, wonderful, super kids. Hi, Dylan. Hi, Jay. Hi, Truett. Hi, Hattie. Hi, Carson. Hi, Kendall. Callan. Hi, Liam. Hi, Harper. Hi, Ashton. Hi, Isla. You're all a bunch of grand kids. You're great, super, wonderful kids. I love you all. Grandpa has a story he wants to tell you today. I know that Dylan and Harper won't understand really what I'm talking about, but maybe they'll just like to hear Grandpa's voice. Maybe that will make them happy. I hope so. The other day, we had a boar in our house. Do you know what a boar is? Well, if you listen closely to the story, I think you'll be able to tell what a boar is. Do you know how that boar got in our house? Well, it started like this. We heard our doorbell ring. It's really not a doorbell. Usually a doorbell is right outside your door. Ours is a gate bell. And that means that we have a fence around the place where we live and there's a gate at the edge of the fence and you have to walk out to the gate to open the gate and see who's there. When we heard the doorbell or the gate bell, Grandma got on her jacket, she walked down the stairs and went out to the gate and opened the gate. And there she met a man. There was a man there who wanted help. She came back and told me about the man. She said, this man wants help. He wants to go to a rehab center. Do you know what a rehab center is? It's a place where men can go and get help. A Christian rehab center is a place where men can learn about God and they also get help in being able to stop bad habits like drinking and taking drugs. So grandma told me this man was standing out by the gate. So I went out and I went and I talked to him. He was cold. He didn't have any gloves and he said he wanted to go to a rehab center. So I invited him inside the gate and up to our apartment and he sat down right inside our apartment door. There grandma brought him some soup and some fruit and some tea and I talked with him a little bit using that a Google Translator phone that helps me understand and talk in Russian. So during that time I tried to make arrangements for him so he could go to a rehab center. Well, after we made arrangements we found that we would have to wait one hour before we could take a train to the rehab center. So we waited an hour and when it was time to go, we all got up and we got our coats on and we went outside and we were just ready to go out the gate and grandpa remembered, oh, I don't have my phone. So I went back up to our apartment and I went back inside and I looked for the phone. And when I looked for the phone, I saw something was missing. There on the shelf, there was an empty space. And you know what was missing? It was this. You know what this is? Can you hear that? What do you think is in there? It's money. That's right. And the man had taken this container and all the money in it. I went outside and I asked him, where is the container with the money? 
He acted like he didn't know. I said, follow me. And we walked back up to the apartment and went inside and I pointed to the empty space on the shelf. And he knew that I knew that he took this container with the money. As soon as he knew that, he said that he was a vore. Do you know what a vore is? He was a thief. He knew he had done wrong and he knew he was caught. Just today, I read a true story about another vore, another thief in the Bible. This story is in the book of Joshua. Joshua is a really great book, a really grand book, a super book about um, Joshua and how God worked through Joshua's life. In this book, Joshua was told that he would take over after Moses died. He would lead the children of Israel. God told Joshua to be strong and to be courageous because he needed to obey the things that God had written in the Bible. And if we want to obey the things that are written in the Bible, we too need to be strong and courageous. He told Joshua to meditate in God's word day and night. And if we're going to be strong and obey God and be courageous, we need to meditate in God's word day and night also. Joshua had a big job to do. His job was to bring God's people into the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised to the children of Israel. He had to go into that land and conquer it because other people lived there. The first big job that he would have to do was he would need to conquer a big walled city called Jericho. It was a strong city with a strong wall around it. How could he ever conquer this city? Well, God had a plan. And Joshua thought, I'm going to send some spies to check this city out and try to prepare for the battle. When he sent the spies, the king of that city knew that the spies were there and he sent to try to catch the spies. But a woman named Rahab hid the spies. She was not a good woman, but she had heard of the powerful things that God had done for the children of Israel when they were in Egypt and how God sent all the plagues and how God helped the children of Israel to come out of Egypt and be safe, how God parted the Red Sea so that they could cross over. Well, she feared God and she helped to save these men's lives. And because she helped to save the spies' lives, she was promised then that her life too would be spared and the life of those in her family, the lives of those in her family also would be spared because um, she believed uh, God. God did some amazing miracles to help the children of Israel conquer the city of Jericho. God had a different battle plan than any man would ever think of. He told the children of Israel, I want you to go and I want you to march around Jericho one time every day for six days. 
Each day they went around the city just one time. On the seventh day, they went around the city seven times. And seven priests had seven trumpets. And after they marched around the city seven times, God said they were to blow those trumpets and the people were to shout at the end of the last trumpet call. And when the people shouted, the walls fell down flat. God did a miracle and helped those big strong walls of the city to fall down flat. Well, the walls fell down flat and the people spared Rahab and her family. God gave them other instructions. He said that they shouldn't take anything for themselves. And if they took any gold or silver or brass or iron, they were only to take that so that they could give that to God as an offering. Well, not all of the children of Israel obeyed. There was one man named Achan, whose name means troubler. How would you like to have a name like that? How would you like to be called troubler? Well, Achan's name meant troubler. And Achan, when he went into the city, he didn't obey God. He didn't plan to disobey but he didn't plan to obey either. When Joshua questioned Achan and told Achan to confess his sin, Achan did right. He fully confessed his sin. In the Bible, this is what Achan said. Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus have I done. I saw among the things a beautiful Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels. And when I saw it, I coveted it. That means he wanted it for himself. And I took them and I hid them. And they're in my tent under the ground. He fully confessed his sin, but there were still great consequences. One time, because he disobeyed, the children of Israel, when they went to battle, didn't win the battle. They lost the battle, and about 36 men died. And that was because of Achan's disobedience. He fully confessed his sin, and that was a good thing. But there were consequences. Other men died, and he himself also had to die. He was stoned with stones, and after he was stoned with stones, they burned his body. You know, it's very important to obey God. When God says not to do something, we need to not do it. God says, don't steal. Stealing is very bad. That's one of the Ten Commandments. The Eighth Commandment in the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt not steal. Another very important commandment to obey is the Fifth Commandment. It's a special commandment just for children. It says, children, honor thy father and thy mother. For this is the first commandment with promise, that thou mayest live long on the earth. God wants you to honor your mother and father. He wants you to obey your father and mother. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, Children, obey your parents, 
Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. If you want to sing a song with that, it goes like this. Children, obey your parents. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. For this is right. Children, obey your parents. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. For this is right. Ephesians 6 1. Ephesians 6 1. Sing it one more time. Children, obey your parents. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. For this is right. Children, obey your parents. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, for this is right. Ephesians 6, 1. Ephesians 6, 1. Can you say that verse now? Ephesians 6, 1. Say it with Grandpa. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Ephesians 6, 1. One more time. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Ephesians 6, verse 1. Good talking to you. It's very important to obey God. If we don't obey God, there's serious consequences. Love you all. Bye.